to bring in my panel now. Attorney Gloria Allred is here, a Clinton supporter, senior political commentator. Scotty Neal Hughes, a Trump supporter and political commentator. Anna Navarro, panel, thank you uh, very much. I want you to listen again to Donald Trump speaking to NBC's Billy Bush. This is 2005. I better use some Tic Tacs just in case I start kissing her. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the pussy. I can do anything. So, Gloria, you have that. And then you have the story by Nicholas Kristof, which you just heard. What's your reaction? And so much more, Don. Well, my reaction is that Donald Trump is a, presents a real and present danger, both to the image and to the status and also to the condition and to the rights of women. This is not just about vulgar behavior. This is about harmful behavior. Don, if we're talking about sexual harassment in the workplace, the courts would talk about, is this severe or is it pervasive? Well, this is both severe and pervasive and as was pointed out earlier this is part of a pattern of conduct we're talking about people on the apprentices uh, on the apprentice complaining that uh, they allege that mr. Trump was talking about their breast size we're talking about Rancho Palos Verdes the Trump golf course here in Southern California where employees alleged that uh, they were not permitted it's perhaps to, w to serve food in the restaurant because they weren't attractive enough they were in fear of being retaliated against this is very serious behavior, and anyone who decides to vote for Trump is condoning it. Okay. And anyone who tries to justify it or excuse it or explain it away is making more of a statement about themselves than they are even about Donald okay, Trump. Well, well, let's ask, because, Scotty, you're a supporter, and, Scotty, you know, I know that you're in a tough position tonight on these shows. Um, to have to come on and I don't know if you necessarily defend these remarks but you do support him as a candidate so why well I don't defend these remarks and I think all of the actions that are being alleged right now are horrible and they're they're evil and they should not be happening in the workplace or anywhere personally or professionally but I would have a lot more credibility with these Don if they were brought out months ago instead of 32 33 days before the election this just shows how this is politically motivated these information all of these stories everything they didn't happen yesterday they didn't happen last week these are stories that just have been that have been around and just magically they're being used right now I would put a lot more credibility in these women if they really were hurt if they really were assaulted if they really um, were as damaged by Donald Trump as they said if they would have gone to this prior months ago weeks ago and right now at this stage in the game the Republican Party some, some they, of these of things have some of these things have were filed before and they just you know now and they're just magically yeah. coming out so I mean this what story right now has been out what, what about specifically to the audio tape and the video of him on Access Hollywood well, this is a video that Access Hollywood, for them just to think that, you know, for us to just believe they've had this for 11 years and magically on Monday they came across it, I find that very hard to believe. I think this just shows the, the working between some media parts and the Hillary Clinton campaign. And I think your prior guest, your prior segment was right when they said, this is all about disenfranchising. That shows just how scared the Hillary Clinton camp is right now about people, the turnout that's going to come out on Election Day. So it's Donald a timing Trump, for you. It's not, it's not the actual, it's not it's, the actions or the alleged actions. It's the timing for you. Well, like I said, I would put more credibility. And, and even in the story, as you pointed out, this woman was sexually, supposedly sexually uh, harassed, was actually thrown down, whatever, the story that goes along with it. Mm -hmm. Horrible, deplorable things. However, uh, she had dated him afterwards for whatever reason, whatever excuse she gives. Don. Why were these stuff not coming out hey, months ago? And Republicans right, right now, I can't Gloria. answer that. Hold on. I can't Repub answer. Okay, Let me ahead. just say Quickly, this. Ahead, I challenge Donald Trump to release all of his employees from their non-disclosure clauses, uh, which many of them have been required to sign. And you will see an avalanche, a tsunami of women who were coming out with similar experiences that they will allege about having been the victims of Donald Trump. But, and so I challenge you to do that. And by the way, there's no right time. There is no wrong time. It's always the right time to come out and, and speak the truth. If the women are speaking the truth, let them do it. And I think that Donald Trump should promise 
not to retaliate against them if but, they do. But Gloria, isn't there a reason why we have something called a statute of limitations? Isn't there a reason why there is a timing on this? And you cannot negate the fact that here we are 30 days out from a, a very important presidential election that these stories are every day coming out. And you have to start doubting the credibility of some. Some might be true. But like I said, I would have had a lot more sympathy for them if this was not such a political move 30-something days before the election. Anna. Scotty, there is no statute of well, limitations on the truth. On and stories. That is on simple. stories, though. And there is no statute then, of then limitations Then why did they take him stories. to court? You know why? Did why? They take because him to court? a woman can suffer and not either have the ability to take them to court or be in fear of somebody who's rich and powerful and famous and as Donald Trump characterizes himself as a star. And what about not only our daughters who are listening to this, what about our sons? What kind of role model is this? Are our sons going to think that somehow it's okay to call women by the P word, by the T word, by the B word, by every other word that he uses to denigrate women? And, and here he is. Glory, but Glory. Scotty, Scotty, hold on. That's not an allegation. We actually heard those words on tape. But I have to get—I have to give Anna a chance. She's been sitting patiently. Anna, I know that you were on it. I don't know if you want to talk about your, what your reaction when you first heard them, or do you want to respond to what they were just saying now? I don't want to respond to the, what they're talking about because I think a, a, a discussion, an argument about the timing is frankly irrelevant. And I think that these women deserve more dignity than this. It is like with the Bill uh, Cosby case. Who cares what the timing of the allegations are? What matters is that it happened. Right now, what I want to focus on is what the Republican Party is going to do. And I want to tell you, look, I, I'm so happy that Paul Ryan did the right thing and canceled that event with Donald Trump tomorrow. But I would say to my friend Paul, whom I know, who I know is a good son, a good husband, a good father, a decent man who cares deeply about women, who is a respectful man, if you can't stand on a stage next to this man, how can you support him? If you are sickened by his words, how can you support him? And I think that is the question that every Republican who is condemning the words needs to ask them themselves today. It is not enough to condemn his words. It is absolutely necessary to withdraw support. It is necessary to tell Donald Trump, Donald, you are fired. We cannot run the risk that a misogynist, that a sexist, that a, that a man who is boasting about sexual predatory behavior be president of the United States. Yeah. He is not fit to represent Republican values. He is not fit to represent American values. And this is way too serious for us not to take action and take action tonight. I'm reading all these condemnations okay. by Ted Cruz and by others. Folks, stop pontificating. Stop talking about what the right thing is and do the right thing. Look okay. at your conscience. Look at your daughters today as they sleep. Look at your wives. Talk uh, to them and ask Anna. yourselves, how do I explain this to these children? Anna, Scotty, and Gloria, I have to take a break. We'll continue with the same panel right after this. We'll be right back. We're back now with our breaking news. Our panel is here, and I have to say that uh, Donald Trump, we're getting news now, has made a statement on videotape. We're going to bring that to you in moments as soon as we get it. Again, Donald Trump making a statement on videotape about these controversial comments that he made back in 2005 to access Hollywood, uh, and we'll bring that to you. So stand by in just moments. Back to my panel now. Scotty, I have to ask you this. This is his, uh, Donald Trump's response. He says, this was uh, locker room banter, a private conversation that took place many years ago. Bill Clinton has said far worse to me on the golf course, not even close. I apologize if anyone was offended. So um, I've heard you and, other, and him and others say, you know, Bill Clinton. But Bill Clinton is not running for president. Bill Clinton paid a heavy price for what he did. He has been impeached. There's no excuse for what Bill Clinton did. And if he doesn't like Bill Clinton, why is he playing golf with Bill Clinton? Why even bring Bill Clinton into the conversation? What does that have to do with the price of tea? Well, let me say this. I'm very glad that Donald Trump did release a video statement. Can't wait to see it. Glad he did that way instead of maybe releasing Twitter tweets at 3 a.m. I'm very excited to see what this uh, video actually has to show. Uh, but the reason why he brought up Bill Clinton is, is there were 17 allegations of sexual misconduct towards women that Hillary went on to basically defame. She did everything she could to hurt them, to uh, ruin their reputation, to demonize them amongst their circles. But he didn't of say friends. that. He said Bill Clinton has said far worse to me on the golf course. 
What does that and have to do with? Anything? And unfortunately, a lot of men have. That's a lot of talking for for a lot. Of, I think it's very hypocritical. A lot of men are not running for president. Bill well, I understand that, and this was from 11 years ago too, when he was a celebrity, when he was not running for president. This just shows that he did not want to run. But you know, the, the key about all this is yes. Donald Trump may be vulgar, but Hillary Clinton is a two-faced liar. And it's because of the women that, like myself, my daughters, my sons, the, the men and women in my family is the reason why I know she can't be in the White House and why Republicans are not doing any service right now by taking Donald Trump out. It would just give to what Hillary Clinton wants. She's, this just shows how scared she is that Donald Trump is actually possibly going to pose more of a threat. And, the, and the, what she wants is Donald Trump to, shoot, to jump out because then guaranteed win for her. Yeah. We are awaiting that video statement from Donald Trump. We're going to bring it to you as soon as we get it. I want to thank my panel. Everyone stand by. We'll be right back. And it's all about this bombshell. Trump caught on tape in 2005 bragging to Billy Bush, at that time a host of Access Hollywood, about his treatment of women. His language, raw, obscene, and repugnant.